Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Ikra's Islam, the way of life, a program for all of you young people out there, our young viewers of Ikra. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. As we start with um, praising Allah and uh, salutations of the Prophet, and we shall also start with Quranic recitations. لقد صدق الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق لا تدخلن المسجد الحرام إن شاء الله إن شاء الله آمنين محلقين رؤوسكم ومقصرين لا تخافون فعلم ما لم تعلموا فجعل من دون ذلك فتحا قريبا والذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم في وجوههم من أثن السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوراة ومثلهم في الإنجيل صدق الله العظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم ما شاء الله beautiful recitation I'm your host for Islam the way of life Ikra's very own show for you young people my name is Abul Hasnab I hope you've been enjoying the episodes that we've done so far I hope you've enjoyed um, the few things that we've discussed about, the good deeds that we've looked at, the seerah um, um, portions that we looked at, and some of the games that we play. And I hope you've tried some of this stuff at home as well. Um, I've got my guests that have returned back with me. Um, some of our regulars are back with me. So I'm going to allow them to do salam to you and to introduce themselves to you as they usually do. So I'm going to go to a young man here on my right. Please do salam. Say your name and how old are you? Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. My name is Suleiman and I'm eight years old. Thank you very much, Suleiman. Young man in the middle, what's your name? Adam. Adam. And how old are you, Adam? Four. Four. Do you want to say salam to everybody? Not today. Okay, inshallah. Our Adam will say salam to you very soon. And young man on the far side, all on your own. Where you go? Assalamu alaikum wa My name is Omar and I'm nine years old. MashaAllah. We have Omar, nine years old. Adam, four years old. And we have Suleiman, eight years old. Alhamdulillah. And I have all of you guys of many ages. But inshallah, we all have one thing in common. We love Allah, we love His Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Okay, we've heard some beautiful recitation as we started. Um, I promised Omar today that Omar would be able to do some recitation for us. Omar, are you ready to do some recitation for us? Which surah are you going to do for us, Omar? Surah Inshira. Surah Atul Inshira. Omar will do for us. Okay, Omar, I want you to look straight at the camera. And when you're ready, begin. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نحشح لك صدرك وطعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقل زحرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع الرس يسرى إن مع الرس يسرى فإذا فرحت فانصب وإلى ربك فارحب ما شاء الله ممتاز تبارك الله أولا عمر 
Uh, so I hope um, you enjoyed Omar's recitation as well. And I hope you've also um, taken the time to memorize Surah Inshira. What a beautiful Surah. And maybe one day we'll look at some of the Surahs and their meanings and how important they are. It's one of my favorite Surahs, I would say. It's one of my favorite Surahs. Um, and it's because of the meaning of it. So inshallah, maybe you guys at home, sit at home with mum and dad now. Have a look at the meaning of Inshira. What part do you like about it? One of my favorite parts is the ayah that you kind of repeat the words. So see if you can find that. It's a challenge for you guys. If you'd like to come on this TV show and you'd like to do some recitation with us, like to be one of my key guest members, please, the email is across the bottom. The WhatsApp number is across the bottom. Send your messages in. If you want to say something, if you have a little message, if you want me to say a message to somebody for you out there, please send it in to us. We would love to hear from you and we would love to give your messages across. Right, we have the time and the space to cover what we always do, which is, which are, what's our next thing we're going to do, Suleiman? Do you remember? Good deeds. You think it's good deeds? Do you guys think we should do good deeds? Yeah? Let's do good deeds. Right. The way we do our good deeds is we show you a video and then we're going to discuss the video and we give you an opportunity to send in also your good deeds on the email underneath and the WhatsApp number underneath. But let's look at this good deed show. Take it away, camera. What a marvelous video and such an easy video. So we're going to discuss this video and I'm going to ask these guys some questions. Maybe you've got some questions too. But in this video, we got to see some young people go out and pick litter up outside. Now I'm going to ask you guys and uh, put your hands up if you know the answer or you want to say it. Picking up litter was really good for what these young people did. But I want to know what makes you not want to pick up litter? Um, okay, Suleiman, you go first. Because it's very dirty. It's very dirty outside. Um, Omar. Um, some people don't. Um, some people also think it's disgusting. Some people find it disgusting. Yeah. Adam, do you want to say anything? Is it hot or cold outside? Hot. Cold. Thank you, Adam. You have all these things that make you not want to go out and help pick up litter. But okay, let's talk about the good things. Why? Is it good to help pick up litter? Why is it good to do such a thing? Because you're going to think, well, you know what? The wind can blow it away or the rain can wash it away. These are all things from Allah. But why should we make the extra effort? Omar, you've got your hand up. Tell me. Um, so then we can save Allah's creations, the animals. Very good, Omar. We can help save Allah's creation, the other animals. But I want to ask you guys, how? Suleiman. Um, we can just... Um, uh, you can just pick it up. Yes, you can just pick it up, but I want to know. Omar said a very interesting point. Omar said that we can save Allah's At the creations. same time, you can do it. At the same time, it's a good deed. It is a good deed. And why is it a good deed? Because it's saving it save the animals, like what Omar said. Yes, and how does it save the animals? Because they don't talk on it. They very good. On the That's the key word that I wanted Omar and Suleiman to say. The animals will choke now. The litter that was being picked up, crisp packets we saw being picked up, um, other pieces of plastic, these are things that don't wash away easily and the wind may blow them to one places, but the wind will blow them back. And if an animal sees it and is very hungry, 
the animal will try to eat it, will choke on it and die. So that's one good, good, good reason to pick up litter. And the, then there's other, many other things. It does, when litter gets together, it does cause blockages and causes issues out on the streets. It can be a slip item. Somebody stepping, uh, not everybody realises, but stepping on a packet of crisps, you can actually slip up, fall and hurt yourself. So there's many good things. And not everybody wants to do it, because like, um, like you guys said at the beginning, it's cold and wet out there, but help pick them up and put them together. It's such a good deed. And did, if you think about it, is it not a good Muslim would pick up litter and would like, would like to be in a clean environment, wouldn't they? Yeah, Omar's got his big thumbs up for that. Yeah, absolutely. So help picking up litter. And I think before we pick up litter, what's a better thing to do to make sure litter's not even there in the first place? Omar? Uh, don't throw them, just chuck them in the bin. Absolutely. Don't even throw the litter in the first place. Try to find the bin and put it there. Now, there's so much going on out in, in right now with the environment. We're trying to save the environment and people are talking about recycling. So try to recycle. Um, as we saw in the video, so so many good things. So, do you guys want to say anything else about the good deed that we just saw about picking up litter? Solomon? Uh, I have no idea. No, that's fine because we spoke about someone. Adam, do you help pick up litter? Yeah? Yes, Adam does, don't you? Well done, Adam. Omar, do you have anything else to say about picking up litter? No? I think that was a really good deed and I hope you guys um, think about at home these good deeds and try to do them. There is suave in doing this. In helping Allah's world, there is suave. And everything you do, every good you do, every sacrifice you do to go and do a good deed, you will get suave for it. So always remember that. Okay? Inshallah. Right. That's our good deeds out of the way. Now we're going to move on to where we left off from the seerah last time. Last week, uh, Suleiman, do you remember what we spoke about from the Sira? Uh, we spoke about the incident of the elephant and how um, and how um, the uh, elef um, one of the elephant called Mahmoud um, uh, and Allah saved the Kaaba. That's right. That was a few episodes ago, but yet that was one of the things we spoke about. Omar, do you remember what we spoke about last week? Did we discuss the names uh, of the Prophet? Yeah and, yeah, and how beautiful the Prophet was. Yeah, we just talked about descriptions of the Prophet and what he looked like. Did we discuss about the characteristics of the Prophet? How he had the Ru'ub? Yeah? And did we talk about why Rocks. did Allah choose Arabia? Because Ibrahim Ali Salam was there. And the people were doing Hajj from the time of Ibrahim, weren't they? Okay, so today we're going to talk about the birth of the Prophet. So inshallah, I'm now going to focus and I hope you... We'll zone in, stop all the distractions around here, and let's now try to focus on the life of the Prophet and when he was born. So let's look at, and I'm going to read off from my notes here, but as I've told everybody, you know, some good books that you can look at. I've got some of them here at the front here, um, some good books that you can look at. Let's look at the birth of the Prophet, inshallah. We have discussed this before, but we're going to go over it again. There's actually very little information about the birth of the Prophet. So, 40, as we're saying, for 40 years before his life, um, he, it wasn't really that important for any recordings to be done. So that's why we're going to have very little. But from what we've got, inshallah, it helps us build a very nice picture. So, um, forgive me, I'm going to keep looking down because I always have to remind myself. But So the Prophet, وسلم, his parents were Abdullah and Amina. Abdullah was one of the sons of Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib was the leader of the Banu Hashim and effectively the leader of the Quraysh. And Abdul Muttalib, we spoke about him already during the incident of uh, the elephant because uh, Abraha came to him, Abdul Muttalib, saying, Stay, move away from the Kaaba, I'm going to destroy it. So anyway, Abdullah, he was, um, he was the son of Abdul Muttalib. Now Abdullah, he, um, there's a bigger story about him where he was saved from being sacrificed by, um, 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 which is another story about Abdullah, Abdul Muttalib saying he may have to sacrifice Abdullah. But alhamdulillah, he didn't have to sacrifice Abdullah. So, there's reports say that Abdullah got married probably at the age of 18 or 25 and they found the bride for him, which is Amina. Um, and she was the daughter of the chieftain of the Banu Zuhra. So, that she was the daughter of the um, chieftain of Banu Zuhra. So, she was also someone important. Abdullah was someone important. And after getting married, three or five days later, 
Abdullah had only been had only been with his wife Amina, both of these are both of the parents of the Prophet had to go with the caravans because that's what they did back then. The Quraysh would go in caravans to go and buy and sell things. So they'd take things from Makkah, probably the best things that they had were dates, and they'd go and buy stuff, go to Syria to go and buy stuff there and sell their dates. So Abdullah went straight away after three or five days of his marriage with Amina. He went three or five days um, later and Amina already got pregnant with the Prophet Sallallahu So what we understand is that once the caravan left, on the way back, um, on the way back, Abdullah fell very ill. So he wasn't able to, he was slowing the caravan down. So they had to leave him behind and the caravan came back. And we know that sl slowly after this, Abdullah had died. Okay, so um, Abdullah had died somewhere close to Medina. Um, and so straight away, the, before the Prophet's even born, his father has passed away. So Amina, she was actually waiting eagerly to tell Abdullah when he returns from the caravan that she's pregnant. But unfortunately, he passed away. So we immediately learn from this that the Prophet wasallam, his dad had died before he was even born. SubhanAllah. I'm just going to take a moment to pause on that because it's something quite, it's quite hard, isn't it? I'm going to ask you guys here. Um, how do you think somebody will feel that, they, that they're born and they don't even have a dad? How would you feel, Suleiman? Oh, I'm like, he, he brought all of this. I'm like, when I get bigger, I think my dad's... When I get bigger, I think my dad's gone to a different country and then he's going to come back in about like one year. One year later, he's not back and then I ask my mum and then sadly my mum says, he, um, but before you even born, she's dad, I'll go out, my eyes will be cracked. Right. You would make you cry, wouldn't it? It would make you sad, isn't it, if you, if you didn't have a dad? And to think that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought us this beautiful, you know, brought us the beautiful Quran. He taught us this religion of Islam, and he didn't even have his dad. So yeah, it's a sad moment that we can think about. So for everybody, if you know any friends or you know anyone out there that's lost their dad or their dad's passed away, let them feel special and let them feel comfort that. They are in the same position as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't have his dad either. So, alhamdulillah, the first lesson that we learn immediately, that Allah gives us from the life of the Prophet, that his dad died while he was still in his mum's belly. SubhanAllah. Let's move on so we can understand the story a bit more. So we understand that, yes, um, he was buried somewhere in near Medina, but at the time, it wasn't called Medina, it was called Yathrib. So he was born somewhere near Yathrib. Okay, now we already spoken about it. it was the eventually nine months later or eight and a half months later, however long it is, the Prophet ﷺ was born and we know that it was born and they call that the year of the elephant. Okay, now nobody knows exactly when his birthday is, but most people seem to believe it's the 12th of Rabiul Awal. Now we don't celebrate the Prophet's birthday in an, any special sort of way. Um, so these are just recordings. Um, there's many different people um, and hadith that I'm just going to quickly quote um, on about the um, Prophet's birthday um, and just so we understand that the 12th of Rabi Awwal isn't actually in these hadith so one we know from the Sahih Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu was asked why did he fast on Mondays and he said that he fasts on Mondays because that was the day he was born okay um, Uthman ibn Afan one of the Sahabas he asked uh, Kuba ibn Ashia Kuba ibn Ashia who was of similar age to the Prophet but he asked um, Kuba ibn Ashiyah, um, who's, who's, who's bigger, you or the Prophet? And Kuban ibn Ashiyah said, I am not bigger than the Prophet, but I am older than him. So we know that that's a very special hadith for us um, about the birth of the Prophet. Right, we also know that the scholars have said that it's probably about 570 years of, um, of the Christian era. So as they say, 570 AD, the year 570. We're right now in the year 2023 and Prophet was born in the year 570, roughly. So that we understand all of this from it. Right, so that's sort of the birth time of the Prophet. So then we spoke, which we've already spoken about uh, um, much much earlier, that um, the Prophet was put up for fostering. Okay, and so Halima fo um, fostered the Prophet. Now we spoke about the incident of the fostering, didn't we, guys? Do you remember? We spoke about the angel coming and washing the Prophet's heart. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the Prophet was returned to Amina. Now when he was returned to Amina after being fostered by Halima, 
and Halima did what she can, which we spoke about, to try to keep him as much, because every time she kept the Prophet ﷺ, she realized there was a blessing after blessing coming to her. But eventually, she had to return the Prophet, especially after the incident of the angel Jibreel coming and washing the Prophet's heart. So when the Prophet returned to Amina, Amina decided that she would go to visit her family in Medina. And during that journey, Amina passed away. And so Amina was buried, and it was only the Prophet ﷺ that was with her as a, as a six-year-old child. The Prophet ﷺ was there as a six-year-old child, and, uh, and one of the, one of the um, maids of, the, of, of Amina was there. So the maid helped bury Amina, and the Prophet ﷺ had to see his own mum die in front of him at the age of six. But the maid buried the, um, Amina, and then the Prophet was returned back to Makkah, to Abdul Muttalib. So, the Prophet ﷺ, from this we learn that he lost his father before his ward and he lost his mother at the age of six. Very quickly I'm going to touch on that he was looked after them by his granddad, Abdul Muttalib. But two years later his granddad and his granddad loved him like a father would love him. Because his granddad knew this is my grandson Muhammad who I named and who was also born without a dad. So he, Abdul Muttalib loved him so much as well. But Abdul Muttalib died two years later. And the Prophet was eight. So by the age of eight, the Prophet's dad had died, his mum had died, his granddad had died. And so he had to live his life and the rest of his life, and we're going to speak so much about him, with his uncle Abu Talib. And inshallah, we'll pick up more on that in our next episode because we are very short in time. And I want to quickly discuss with you guys here about the Prophet وسلم, not having his mum and his dad and his granddad. Okay, um, if you had your mum and your granddad and your dad not alive, Omar, how would you feel? Um, I'd feel sad. You'd feel, feel sad, wouldn't you? Yeah, would you feel the same as well, Suleiman? I would, would, I'd yeah. be like, how would I even live? Yeah, so it's amazing. You can think like this, you know, how would I even live? But the moral for today, and I think the moral that I want to quickly speak about today is if you have anyone that's had their granddad pass away, or their mum, or their dad, just remind them thank that they are not alone. Say thank, that, Suleiman. Thank what you have. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Suleiman. That's beautiful. Thank what you have because think of your position as well. You are in the same position as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to be one of the highest person people in heaven, inshallah, you will be one of them too. So remind your friends. And those of you that are watching and have lost your mum or your dad or your granddad, Inshallah, remember the Prophet also did and you're in the same position as them. That's all we've got time for. We've run out of time so quickly today. Um, but Suleiman, Adam and Omar, I hope you guys will be back with me again next week. Uh, inshallah, I hope you guys will be back with us too as well. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, stay with us. We're going to keep going to the Sira and we're going to keep looking at good deeds. Until then, this is Islam, the way of life from Ikra. And I bid you farewell. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.